Two days before polling, there's been a massive escalation in the state of war in Punjab. Accused of pandering to Khalistanis and separatists by self, calling himself Chwas, Arvind Kejriwal has come out to defend himself, calling himself the sweetest terrorist in the world. Kejriwal accused the Congress and the BJP of trying to sabotage his party's prospects in Punjab. दुनिया का सबसे स्वीट आतंकवादी होऊंगा मोदी जी ने क्या किया मेरे को गिरफ्तार क्यों नहीं किया इनकी एजेंसीज क्या कर रही थी अभी तक इनको इनको मेरे से डर लग रहा है अंडर फायर फॉर अलेजेड खालिस्तानी एंड सेपरेटिस्ट लिंक एन एंग्री अरविंद केजरीवाल ब्रोक हिज साइलेंस ऑन फ्राइडे मॉर्निंग अक्यूज्ड ऑफ पैंडरिंग टू द सेपरेटिस्ट इन पंजाब जस्ट डेज बिफोर द स्टेट गोस टू पोल्स अरविंद केजरीवाल डिक्लेयर्ड दैट ही इज नॉट अ टेररिस्ट ये लोग पंजाब को तोड़ने का सपना पाले हुए हैं ये लोग सत्ता के लिए अलगाववादियों से भी हाथ मिलाने को तैयार है सात साल से बीजेपी की सरकार है केंद्र में मोदी सरकार है मोदी जी ने क्या किया मेरे को गिरफ्तार क्यों नहीं किया इनकी एजेंसीज क्या कर रही थी अभी तक केजरीवाल क्यूज द कांग्रेस एंड द बीजेपी ऑफ ज्वाइनिंग फोर्सेज टू स्टॉप आप फ्रॉम विनिंग इन पंजाब जो व्यक्ति आतंकवादी के घर में सो सकता है वो पंजाब की रक्षा कहां से करेगा जो आदमी डर जाता है वो पंजाब की रक्षा कैसे करेगा इनको इनको मेरे से डर लग रहा है एक तरह से इन लोगों के लिए मैं आतंकवादी हूं जनता के लिए तो मैं स्कूल बनवाता हूं जनता के लिए अस्पताल बनवाता हूं लेकिन इन लोगों के लिए मैं आतंकवादी हूं The Delhi chief minister said that he was under attack from all sides and that the entire system was against him. Satta mein aane ke liye to kuch bhi kar dalenge. Unke ek saathi hai unka kal bayan aaya tha. Keh rahe the ki Kejriwal ji ne mujhe kaha ki agar Punjab ke CM nahi to theek hai duniya ke pehle naye desh ke PM to ban jaunga main. Aatankwadiyon ke ghar mein ja ke rehte hain ek chote miyan saab. Shayad main दुनिया का सबसे स्वीट आतंकवादी होऊंगा आज तक तो मैं समझता हूं कि दुनिया में ऐसा कोई आतंकवादी पैदा नहीं हुआ जो सड़कें बनवाता है पानी बनवाता है बिजली ठीक करता है लोगों को बिजली फ्री देता है लोगों की सेवा करता है ऐसा तो आतंकवादी आज तक कभी पैदा ही नहीं हुआ होगा कुमार विश्वास एंड कॉल हिम अंडिस्ट पोएट्री मेरे अंदर जो जो था जो मुझे पता था वो निकल गया यही मेरी क्वालिटी है कि मैं बोलता हूँ तो निकल जाता है और उससे उसके चिंटों से ये कहना है कि आका की थोड़ी बहुत इज्जत बचानी है ना तो मुझसे ज्यादा मत बुढ़ो वरना मैं सारी बता दूंगा क्या क्या है कुछ सांपों के इलाज कुछ विशेष सपेरों पर होते हैं ये दुर्भाग्यशाली है कि भारत की राजनीतिक पार्टियों के पास वो कौशल नहीं है कि वो ऐसे सपेरों को पिटारे में बंद कर सके प्रधानमंत्री जी ने राहुल गांधी की स्पीच देखी तब प्रधानमंत्री जी को समझ में आया कि इतना बड़ा आतंकवादी इस देश के अंदर पनप रहा है ये तो शुक्र उस कवि का जो इसने जो उसने इतना बड़ा आतंकवादी पकड़ लिया नहीं तो इनकी सारी एजेंसीज नहीं पकड़ पाई थी मतलब ये चल क्या रहा है आवर्स आफ्टर हिज ड्रोमेटिक प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस अरविंद केजरीवाल ट्वीटेड दिस कार्टून बट हिज पोलिटिकल ऑपोनेंट आर नॉट बाइंग हिज डिफेंस ए ए पी मतलब अरविंद एंटी पंजाब जो पंजाब का मुख्यमंत्री बनने के साथ साथ खालिस्तान का प्रधानमंत्री बनने का भी सोच रखते हो ऐसे आरोपी नहीं ऐसे इनके साथियों ने बार बार कहा है पंजाब की जनता इसको कभी मंजूर नहीं करेगी प्लीज डू नॉट मेक पंजाब द बैटल ग्राउंड फॉर योर ओन पर्सनल फाइट दिस इज अ बॉर्डर स्टेट देर सेंसिटिविटी इज आउट आउट हेयर आई अर्ज ऑल दीज पीपल नॉट टू इंडल्ज इन दिस पेटी पॉलिटिक्स The heavy exchange of fire indicates the fight in Punjab is a tight one. With hours to go before the state votes, we will know on 10th of March whether this entire controversy is hurting the Aam Aadmi Party and Arvind Kejriwal. Bureau report, India Today. Kumar Vishwas versus Arvind Kejriwal. This charge of bring pro Khalistani. It's an allegation that hurt the Aam Aadmi Party badly in the 2017 elections. Coming as it does right ahead of polling. could it impact the aap's fortunes in that big exciting battle in punjab to talk about uh, the state of play uh, i'm joined on this broadcast representing the ruling bharatiya janata party at the center sanju verma representing uh, the congress party on this broadcast is adil singh boparai 
from the Akali Dal, we have Jangveer Singh. Gaurav Bakshi is an activist and analyst who leans towards the Aam Aadmi Party. Uh, Yashwan Deshmukh joins us, one of India's foremost cephologists, uh, the head of Seawater. And with me in the studio is Harmeet Singh Shah, senior editor at India Today. He's been travelling through Punjab and has his own analysis based on ground reportage. So I want to go across first and foremost to Gaurav Bakshi on whether this charge of being pro-Khalistani coming as it does in the din of campaigning right ahead of big polling on Sunday. Could this mar the fortunes of the Aam Aadmi Party by creating doubts in the minds of voters whether Kejriwal has pro-Khalistani leanings? Uh, thank you. I think I caught most of that uh, point that you made. My thoughts here would be that, uh, first of all, at, at the uh, twilight hour of elections, the fact that allegations are coming, allegations which to me are baseless, uh, I think the average citizen such as me or an observer, political observer, in that capacity, I would say these are unnecessary and should not be done by any political party. It is not about being against AAP or not. Uh, these are frivolous, not required at this moment. Coming to the exact uh, specific allegation, the fact that Kumar Vishwas was with the party for a long time, uh, wanted certain benefits which he was not able to get, he then left. I think this is a case of sour grapes, uh, quite easily visible. Uh, there's no rocket science about that. Uh, secondly, every other party trying to target one party, in this, in this particular instance, it's the AAP. I think uh, it's very easy to see this is politics going to an ugly level. Uh, I feel parties should refrain from doing such things. Um, that's my comment here, please. Okay, Sanju Varma, coming as it does, with just about 72 hours to go for polling, the Congress and the uh, BJP ganging up against the Aam Aadmi Party. AAP is saying this is evidence that we are winning, the Congress knows it, the BJP knows it, therefore they're trying to throw muck at my face. You know, Rahul, first and foremost, let me tell you, this is not a binary fight between the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress. Point number two, BJP has a lot of skin in the game. And point number three, whether the allegations against Arvind Kejriwal have been made 48 hours or 72 hours prior to uh, the uh, people of Punjab going into uh, vote, that is immaterial. That does not dilute the seriousness of the allegations. And point number four, I always believe proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I'm sure, Rahul, you recall in 2017, I will give you the exact date. It was the 4th of February. Arvind Kejriwal had stayed at the house of Khalistan Liberation Front leader, Gurvinder Singh. And, you know, Gurvinder Singh since then fled to London. Now, the other most important point, which I think is tragic, and, you know, it's funny at the same time. Look at the ridiculous press conference being done. You have somebody like a Raghav Chadda saying, Arvind Kejriwal is a sweet and innocent terrorist. Arvind Kejriwal has the audacity to liken himself to Bhagat Singh. But if you notice carefully, neither has KG1 nor has their official spokesperson to deny the allegations rather than trying to make light of the seriousness of the allegations. And I think Kumar Viswas has been, you know, almost like a founding father of the party along with the likes of Sisodia and KG1. And if he says something, there is certainly more to it than meets the eye. And to simply dismiss this as a case of star grade is, I think, a lot of visual thinking. And I just want to ask one more thing. You know, our party party keeps going around saying, I'm jeeping, I'm jeeping. 2017, they said we will win more than 100 seats out of the 117 seats. They were reduced to a measly okay. 2020 so, seats. Ad Adil Singh Boparai, you have a situation currently where Chief Minister Channi is asking Prime Minister Modi to order an inquiry against a mutual enemy. This uh, congruence of interests of the BJP and the Congress right ahead of polling in Punjab uh, would make uh, the voters of Punjab wonder what in the world is going on. Why are BJP and the Congress speaking the same language? Kabal sahab, first and foremost, the Aam Admi Party is a surrogate of the BJP. 
and flowing from that ideology arvind kejriwal is trying to destroy the social fabric of punjab for electoral reasons now kumar vishwas is an old compatriot of arvind kejriwal he has nothing to do with the congress party but be that as it may the aam aadmi party in punjab is a party of rejected candidates 40% of their candidates are those who have been rejected by the traditional and the mainstream parties of punjab but i would like to emphasize on something which is more critical the aam aadmi party has been selling tickets in punjab the aam aadmi party's ticket apparently the going rate is 2 crore rupees these are issues which really resonate amongst the people of punjab punjab and punjabiyat will never accept delhi imports to rule arvind kejriwal through a remote control wants to control punjab this is not acceptable and as far as the aam aadmi party and their popularity or credentials are concerned let me say this with a degree of responsibility that the aam aadmi party's credibility is being overstated if you recollect 2017 they fell flat on their feet and this is the same arvind kejriwal let me remind you it's important i must say this on national television that arvind kejriwal prostrated he prostrated before bikram majithia he apologized to bikram majithia and who is bikram majithia bikram majithia is the kingpin of the drug mafia in punjab it is the aam aadmi party the akali dal and the bjp who are playing a fixed match it is the congress which has a vision which has leadership everyone is accusing the other of fixing aap says samne hue ji between the congress and the bjp congress says aap is the b team of the bjp yashwan deshmukh in your analysis how is this likely to play out on voting day two things can happen broadly one is that people become suspicious of aap like they did in 2017 it holds them back uh, in the ultimate analysis the second is that people could feel sympathetic that okay his party seemed to have been doing well they've all got together leveled this allegation against him it seems a bit far fetched and therefore it actually becomes a vote mobilizer rather than something that has a negative effect you see five years back rahul this had resulted in a polarization of hindu votes for the congress party uh, and uh, which became a stumbling block because uh, amadmi party which was leading in the numbers Uh, did fall down after that. I mean, that is for guaranteed sure. But right now, the way the numbers are looking at, and the way the trends are looking at, till now, I mean, when we did the last poll, uh, it was very clear that the big number of Hindu votes which had gone towards the Congress were coming or uh, polarizing for the BJP and Captain combined. The electorally speaking, it might not, uh, you know, significantly. Uh, tell how many seats they would be leading or winning but yes uh, the coming back of hindu votes from the congress towards the bjp that was an interesting phenomena to observe in the last 6 odd weeks uh, now after this whether can can this uh, potentially take them polarize them again in favor of the congress unlikely because uh, congress is right now facing huge anti incumbency sentiment across the state so i don't think there is a clear cut uh, uh, opponent to aam aadmi party right now in punjab in that way where these votes uh, who are who are uh, who are fearing the khalistani sentiment who fear going back to the 80s sort of thing if this you know these allegations are in any way going to have any impact i don't see any one poll where these votes will go in order to defeat aam aadmi party harmeet so please, does this seem according to your analysis a charge which could stick it did damage kejriwal in 2017 could that happen again or has it come too late in the campaign now to make a material impact on people's voting behavior it has come too late in the campaign definitely uh, the reason being that this election uh, in the first place is not uh, being fought on religious issues uh, i i toured punjab and you know political parties would talk about sacrilege and i and i felt that okay sacrilege might be a broader religious issue but it's not an election issue so is this khalistan thing it's not an election issue uh, this election is being fought on bread and butter issues number 1 number 2 what uh, i think it will impact some pockets of hindu vote maybe some pockets but not significantly because people may not uh, really know uh, even that who kumar vishwas is what what, what his uh, stature is in punjab politics so all these things matter the other thing that i have in my mind and it should worry aam aadmi party is that 
uh, and what makes this in, uh, campaign more interesting is that it's not just uh, uh, the Khalistani thing that has happened, it's the Sikh political right, which has completely gone against uh, Aam Aadmi Party, uh, especially after Deep Sidhu's death. And that's not coming on uh, national TV, but if you see social media, the Sikh political right uh, accuses Aam Aadmi Party of being a B team of uh, uh, the BJP, that's something really interesting where you have uh, attacks coming from both sides, the Sikh political right as well as uh, the Congress party and the BJP and the Akalis on Kumar Vishwas uh, allegations. Jangveer Singh from the Shiromani Akali Dal, are the Akalis once mighty in Punjab being edged out in this battle which is largely between AAP and the Congress with BJP being a side player? AAP, Akalis have their own strongholds and bastions but they don't seem to be a serious contender at this moment for power across the state. Uh, Rahulji, you are reading this all wrong. So I'd like you, you, I think you were in Chandigarh. I met you in Chandigarh a few days back. You should have gone through the villages also. I did, I must and, tell you. I, I travelled all then, through and I came to Chandigarh have, only at the have, end. Have, yeah, go on. You must have got reports or you can see on social media what kind of crowds, gatherings, Sadar Sukhbir Singh Badal is attracting. We are the only party which has been active at the grassroots level. We are the only party which has held mass rallies. And we are the only party which has gathered crowds. You've seen how, you know, Rahul Gandhi addressed empty chairs a few days back in Usharpur. Everywhere, you know, the Congress campaign is collapsing. It's, in fact, it's already collapsed. So, uh, Aam Aadmi Party cannot touch beyond 20. And what, what you were talking about earlier about Kejriwal and Six for Justice and this Khalistan issue, I'd like to make it clear, this is not the first time Mr. Kejriwal, you know, has spotted radicals. He did it in 2017 that you all know about, everyone in the panel knows about that. But you would also like to uh, know that Six for Justice also have a, you know, you know kind of uh, liking for Kejriwal or they have some kind of special relationship. Because in Canada, Six for Justice bought advertising space to, you know, advertise in favor of the Aam Aadmi Party. You know, now if the question is, do, do people buy? I think that's the critical question. Sanju Verma, you've got a charge leveled by Kumar Vishwas. The fact, the, the fact is that Kumar Vishwas left the Aam Aadmi Party in an unglorious circumstance. He and Kejriwal clearly at this moment are daggers drawn. And therefore, the question is, do the voters of Punjab believe this sensational charge leveled by someone who's currently at odds with Arvind Kejriwal? That's the critical question. You will have a take on it, but you don't know the final answer because the final answer will be given by the people of Punjab. Do they find Kumar Vishwas's charges uh, to be credible or not? Sanju Varn. Rahul, you've asked a very pertinent and interesting question. Uh, quite obviously, the results on March 10th will uh, tell everybody which way the wind is blowing. Having said that, you know, I find it extremely disconcerting that the very people who till a few weeks back thought Yogendra Yadav is holier than thou, when Gul Panad makes accusations at the BJP and Prime Minister Modi, she's holier than thou. But today, the same Gul Panad, the same Yogendra Yadav, Kumar Vishwas, when they are pointing fingers at Arvind Kejriwal, raking up his separatist background. You know, suddenly the entire media, barring a few channels like yours, have gone completely quiet. Today, suddenly, Yogendra Yadav no credibility, Gul Panam no credibility, Kumar no credibility, and Arvind Kejriwal, who's pumping more than 600 crores into advertisement. You know, suddenly he's become larger than life. I will quickly end by just asking to your channel a few questions. Is it true? that the Delhi Jal Board, which had a surplus of 600 crores till two years back, is today running into a deficit of 6,300 crores. Is it... More than 132,000 primary school children have fallen out of schools in schools run by the Amadi Party. Is it not true that 450 out of 473 Mohalla have shut down? Is it not true? That in secondary schools, the past percentage has fallen from 99% okay. okay. so, to 68 So, Gaurav, Gaurav Bakshi, would Is you concede that all that these charges Arvind which are being leveled, the charge of Kumar Vishwas alleging that Kejriwal is pro-Khalistan, Harmeet talking about how the radical or right-wing Sikh 
political elements have turned against Kejriwal. Uh, all of this seems to have muddied the waters. At a time when it seemed there was momentum riding behind AAP, you now have a very, very confusing sky because you've got all these charges and ultimately in a state where people, to a great extent, are deciding where to go and cast their vote in the final call, uh, it now causes uh, everyone to pause and ponder over what will ultimately happen and therefore it's now far more complicated than it would have otherwise been had these charges not been leveled. I think these charges have come at a certain time, which is very, very interesting. We all can see that. Uh, what's going to happen is that uh, the fact that the nature of the allegations is such, it's very clear that there is a lot of nerv nervousness in the opposition parties. Therefore, as a protective mechanism, they are trying to lash out to create an impact. I think it will be seen through. Uh, the, the, I think it will be seen through and the impact will be negligible, uh, is my take on it. Are you saying Gulpanad is lying? Why is it that all of Arvind Kejriwal's ex-colleagues have suddenly decided to raise up but, this issue? Are you saying Arvind Kejriwal is Radha Harish Chandra? Arvind Kejriwal is Radha Harish Okay, Chandra. Yashwan Deshmukh, it's very interesting. When a charge of this nature gets leveled right before rates. polling day, no one knows how people will process and decode the charges, what impact it will have on this voter psyche, the and time. therefore... Does it make the task of uh, analyzing the elections that much more complicated because suddenly the bogey of Khalistan which wrecked Kejriwal's ship in 2017 is back in the waters again? Well, it's suddenly anything that comes before the election does muddle up the water. But when people's mood is uh, overwhelmingly in favor of a change, uh, uh, that is something which has to still, uh, you know, uh, qualify into that, Rahul, because... Uh, uh, what we have seen is an unprecedented mood for change on the ground. And I don't see how any statement will make Congress again the beneficiary of uh, Hindu votes just because of uh, this statement or the Khalistan boogie rising again. Uh, so probably even if it would have impacted, this probably is too late in the game. Interesting. It what, what, the other big question, the... Yashwant, is about the vote of the Deras. Uh, the data is in about 60 odd seats can play an influential role in determining who wins. According to you, which way are the data likely to go? Will they go as one vote block? Is that at all possible? Or is the reality far more nuanced and the vote is more likely to be split in different areas? No, data are critical, Rahul. I can never say that data are not critical. And they have huge followings, massive followings, and very, very dedicated followings. So there are different kind of deras which are uh, uh, probably showing inclination this way or that way for different political groups. And uh, largely we have seen that uh, few of the deras where, uh, you know, Dalit population is important out there. One of them uh, is uh, pretty much in favor of Channi. Two more deras in favor of the BJP that we have seen not directly making any announcement. But yes, one big influential radiation body has said... Uh, about Akali Dal, that they will they will stand with the Akalis. So all these uh, are critical, important, and particularly in the Malwa, you know, uh, the two two or three important ones where uh, you know uh, probably one of them for 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 Akalis and one definitely for Chani Sahab. But for the Hindu deras or Hindu voter way of looking at it, I think their, their polarization is already happening for the for the BJP. Electorally, how significant would that be in terms of seats? It is unpredictable. But uh, yeah, I mean, they are critical, they are important and they will play there soon. Adil Singh Bopar, I respond to the point that Yashwan makes about the yearning for change. It's something that I picked up as well when I travelled from Punjab, Jalandhar, Ludhiana, Nawasheher, all the way down uh, to Chandigarh. The fact that voters in Punjab at this moment are yearning for change and change can be manifested in two ways. One is you sweep the Congress out, you bring another party in. The other is that Channi as an agent of change. Channi saying, I am not Amrinder, I am the un-Amrinder and therefore I am the change <laughs> you seek. And that's the question. Does not Channi likely. let Congress represent enough change or do the voters of Punjab want something more dramatic? And in that analysis, the yearning for change could bite the Congress's fortunes, Adil. 
Kamal Sahib, I think the, Kumar, the most significant takeaway from the Kumar Vishwas controversy as a preliminary pointer is that Arvind Kejriwal can stoop to any level to secure power. I think that's the more significant takeaway. But you're believing now, what Kejriwal said, which you should because you're in the Congress. You don't know whether the voters of Punjab feel similarly. Hear, hear me out, hear me out. Uh, Kaval Sahib, history bears testimony to the fact that our friends in Delhi often get Punjab predictions wrong because Punjab often springs a surprise. Now, please understand the Aam Aadmi Party does not have organizational base. The Aam Aadmi Party is a party of pathological liars. They shoot and scoot. They believe in slandering somebody. And when they're faced or confronted with facts, they, they literally prostrate and kneel down on the ground. Mr. Kejriwal's conduct over the past seven to ten years bears testimony to this. But I want to highlight the more important fact which you alluded to, the agent of change. Mr. Chenni is the agent of change, a son of the soil, an individual, a statesman from a backward community, a community which, which has faced oppression in the past for decades, for centuries. Today is at the helm. He's at the helm of, of a state which is significant to the overall national calculus. I think that is the most significant point which everybody must delve into. And Mr. Channi is a man of integrity. He has a vision for Punjab. Bhagwant Man, and I am compelled to say this, does not have the seriousness, the credibility, or uh, the poise to be the chief minister of a border state like Punjab. Ultimately, the people of Punjab will be able to gauge this. And responding to what Mr. Yashwan Deshmukh has said, Please, I hail from that state. Let me remind him that this Hindu-Muslim, Hindu-Sikh model doesn't work in Punjab. Kamal Sahib, you're a Punjabi. Punjabis, regardless of whether they're Hindus or Muslims or Sikhs, believe in Punjabi. So the BJP model of creating schisms or chasms between communities will not work. When you talk about a Punjabi voter, he does not see things from a religious prism. Kejriwal and the BJP may try their luck at that. But like in 2017, Believe you me, that is going to fall flat. The one other interesting thing is the charge of AAP being a party of outsiders. Uh, when Priyanka Gandhi went uh, to Punjab, she said that ye Delhi to, uh, to which Bhagwan Man at the uh, Punjab Panchayat that we did, Harmeet, had a very interesting counter. To hai kidro aaye, moge to aaye. So she said, where is she from? Is she from Moga? So it was interesting because the charge really being that uh, the Congress is also Delhi based, so is the Aam Aadmi Party. But this again is something that the AAP's opposition is using against them that Bhagwant Man will somehow be subservient to Kejriwal and act like a remote control. That's why I am a bit cautious about this uh, surround sound uh, of uh, sport uh, that we are hearing out of Punjab. You see, uh, in 2017, there was a real storm brewing in Punjab and we all felt that. And, and there was also this talk about, and then there was one thing that was happening, alternative politics. This time, alternative politics is out of the scene. This time, NRIs are out of the scene. This time, uh, there is a very silent vote block, which, which is not talking about what kind of change it wants. So uh, that's why I'll be very guarded about uh, this noise. And remember one thing, in Punjab, uh, people cast their vote uh, I think what the, the real thing happens when, the, when they are at the hustings. It's not about discussions at the Thabas. It's not about discussions with the reporters. Uh, one cadre is really important. And in that respect, I have seen that Akalis uh, and the Congress party, they both have cadre on the ground. So if you travel across Punjab, there are 10 villages, you will find that maybe, uh, you know, uh, two or three villages have AAP cadre. Uh, you won't see uh, uh, in the rest, uh, the rest villages uh, having a significant number of AAP workers persuading voters. So there are many uh, strengths and weaknesses that AAP is caught in. It's not uh, the final word. Campaign has, is over officially, but it's not yet on social media. I think the game is still on and it will uh, remain on till the last vote is caused. You know, I, I just want to build on the analogy that uh, Harmeet made, which is that a wave seems to be building. Of that, there can be no doubt. When you're standing on the beach, you can see out in the sea, there's a wave coming. Now that wave can manifest itself in different ways. It could be a huge wave, it could be a tsunami, or it may just peter out and be a much smaller wave than what uh, you'd anticipate when you're sitting out on the beach. So both can happen. Therefore, uh, every single comment, every single development right till the end from an unfortunate death of an activist 
in a road accident to these charges to Rahul Gandhi jumping in and saying, is Kejriwal telling the truth? Uh, is uh, Kumar Vishwas telling the truth? Kejriwal, Jawab do. All of this has an impact. I want to thank for the time being Yashwan Deshmukh, Jangveer Singh, Gaurav Bakshi, Sanju Verma, Adil Singh Bopara. It's an exciting election. Make no mistake about that. Uh, in the end, we don't care as much about who wins, but this is boiling, uh, turning out to be a real humdinger. I want to show you now what the mighty Navjot Singh Sidhu said. Remember, he fancied himself as the share of Punjab, as the star campaigner. He's now locked into Amritsar East because he's got the formidable Bikram Majithia against him. So much so that he had to actually go out and apologize. He's largely been missing in action, doing comedy shows and laughter challenges in Mumbai and elsewhere. He had to actually go to his voters, say sorry, say that I hope to be better and I hope to be with you by your side for the next five years. तो नुकरंती देखे क्या ना के लैंडलाइन नंबर होएगा हेलो एमएलए के सेम वर्कर था मेरे को फोन कॉल आया एक कंपे दे बेचना अब जो सिंह सिद्धू का जवाब आएगा उधर नाल उधर संपर्क हो एक गारंटी है नहीं और ये मेरी गलती है मैं इस तकमान कर रहा Navjot Singh Sidhu is batting on a tricky pitch. The Congress contestant from Amritsar East suddenly find himself battling discontent just few days ahead of polling. Sidhu's voters are miffed. Many in his constituency have shut their doors on him. Sidhu's wife isn't receiving much love from the voters either. Time and again, Sidhu's absence from constituency has hit headlines. Voter sentiments reflected in India Today's ground reports too. सब तो पंजाब के इतिहास के सब तो माड़ा कार्यकाल नवजोत सिंह सिद्धू का रहा है पिछले पंद्रह साल तो वह हल्का पूर्वी की कबाण साम रहे थी लेकिन पिछले पंद्रह साल उन्होंने धेली का विकास नहीं कराया सिर्फ तो सिर्फ उन्होंने की रहा कलेष कलेष तो कलेष कलेष तो अलावा होर कि भी नहीं उन्होंने ना कोई डिवेलपमेंट की ना कोई उन्होंने कार्यकाल किया बहुत बड़े बड़े वादे किए थे जी हल्के में आप जाके एक चक्कर लगा के आओ यहाँ से जो एरिए हैं वहाँ पे देखो जाके इनकी मुंह बोलती तस्वीर हलकों की पंजाब मॉडल की बात कर रहे हैं ये बनाने की अपने हलके का मॉडल जाके इनको देख दिखाओ और शक्ल देख के आओ आप अवरिट सिद्धू हैज नाउ पब्लिकली अपोलोजाइज फॉर बीइंग अ कांस्टेंट एब्सेंटी एंड प्रॉमिस टू चेंज मेरी सब तो बड़ी गलती है कि मेरा सत्ता संपर्क नहीं हो सका तो कोई वर्कर रात को डेढ़ बजे मिलना चाहूंगा नहीं मिल सका an apology has been made, but will the voters accept it? For now, Sidhu has no choice but wait for the umpire's verdict. With Manjit Segal, Bureau Report, India Today.